Thank you, Senator Dean Natale. Senator Singh, on this subject. Thank you. Um, Labor welcomes today's tabling of the Senate Select Committee's report into the obesity epidemic in Australia. Um, and I'd just like to say, as the co committee's deputy chair, uh, to express my gratitude to all of those individuals and organisations from across Australia who made submissions to this inquiry, some 153 submissions, uh, and also those that appeared at public hearings. As the chair, um, Senator Dean Natale, has outlined, obesity uh, in Australia is a really serious problem. And that is why I have um, in, well, enjoyed, in the sense of um, being informed about uh, what we can do at a policy level to tackle this, what has been termed an epidemic, uh, because the rates of obesity continue to rise. We have worked very constructively through this Senate Select Committee to come up with, I believe, a really um, constructive, uh, fulsome, informative report that has a number of key recommendations that I think um, will be of huge benefit to the Australian population going forward if they are implemented. Um, of course, the rates of obesity, 28 per cent of the population, 28 per cent aged between 15 and over, making us the fifth highest among the OECD countries and while Australia's rate of childhood obesity is increasing rapidly. Our 2014-15 data shows 63 per cent of Australian adults were overweight or obese, and 71 per cent were men and 56 per cent were women. There is currently over one million children in Australia who are overweight or obese, while 20 per cent of children aged two to four and 27 per cent of children and adolescents aged five to 17 were overweight, overweight or obese. So those statistics, I think, uh, are alarming because we know with children and adolescents that the short-term health impacts include thing, chronic conditions such as breathing difficulties, fractures, hypertension, insulin resistance and early markers of cardiovascular disease. And that's why um, government needs to really act and address this issue. The most significant long-term health impacts of childhood obesity that manifest into adulthood are cardiovascular disease, diabetes, musculoskeletal disorders and certain types of cancer. We had a wide range of stakeholders um, make submissions to this committee's inquiry um, and they urged, they urged government for targeted health interventions, for broad educational campaigns and, as the chair has uh, referred to, the need for a national obesity task force, which is one of the key recommendations in this report. I think, indeed, uh, many of us in this place were alarmed to learn that there was no um, kind of body within government that's looking at addressing obesity. So, as a start, uh, that is something I think government could get on with and do straight away. Some of the key submitters we heard during this inquiry uh, hearings included the Centre for Research Excellence in the Early Prevention of Obesity and Childhood <coughs> Children's Hospital at Westmead in Sydney, Diabetes Australia, Choice, the Root Cause, the Global Obesity Centre, Parents Voice, the Health Star Rating Advisory Committee, Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, Public Health Association of Australia, the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Health, Australian Local Government Association and, of course, the Depart Australian Department of Health. But listening to some of these passionate individuals, particularly one I want to highlight is Belinda Smith from a organi small organisation called The Root Cause, where she shared with us the foods that were in children's lunchboxes every day. And I think it's a very good place to start. Belinda and The Root Cause believe that with a focused effort at the grassroots level around school food, about around what is in children's lunch boxes, it is possible to prevent and curb childhood obesity, plus improve um, on the, the sort of academic results we have this far. And she told me about uh, an Australian tour that the root cause went on to transform children's health 
and the re called the Real Food Lunchbox Project. And she learnt that children out of that uh, project, the children just want to fit in. And in saying that, children want to eat whatever their friends are eating. If their friends are eating packets, they eat packets. But if they are all eating real food, um, fruit, vegetables, uh, then even the kids whose parents say they are fussy eaters will eat the fruit and the vegetables. And I think um, listening to Belinda and listening to her experience, which was in schools right across the country where she saw pretty much the same thing happening, uh, I think we can really learn from addressing this at, at the school level and at the educational campaign level and also look at other jurisdictions overseas and what they've done uh, in that front. I think France is a France and the UK, in fact, are two easy examples. I mean, in France they actually have a cooked um, lunch within the school. Um, I think the UK have a, a kind of similar model to, to some degree. So I think when students, when kids are turning up with all of this uh, sugary drinks, uh, sugary foods, packaged foods, processed foods in their lunchbox it does not set them up well for the rest of their lives. I know it's quick and easy, but it, long term it is doing them detrimental damage. And we need to support those families to address this, to support schools to address this, so that kids eat well. Because not only is there a benefit to their physical health, there is a massive benefit to their mental health, to their learning capacity, and that, again, is something that we heard uh, through evidence provided through organisations such as the root cause. There are so many individuals and organisations so passionate about this, this issue because they are seeing, they're at the coalface and they are seeing what is going on with our kids. You know, the, the, this rise of obesity in our kids is really, really, really worrying. And that's why the recommendations we've proposed as um, Senator De Natale went to, you know, a national obesity strategy, looking at food labelling, how we can improve food labelling, uh, looking at food re reformulation, looking at advertising, looking at education campaigns, looking at healthcare interventions, community-based multi-strategy interventions. This is, a, this is a holistic issue. Yes, government can play a role, but it is also about the broader community and we need to support the broader community at playing uh, the, the, the role that they can play as well. Now, um, Labor is very pleased to support the majority of the recommendations uh, in our committee report, like the establishment, of, as I said, of the task force, of an obesity strategy, labelling uh, that's fit for purpose, um, that repre you know, obviously represents the nutritional value, the nutritional value of foods and beverages. But, however, we of course do agree with those majority of recommendations. We have provided a short dissenting report on the implementation of the sugar sweetened beverage tax and restrictions and mandatory health star rating on food and drink advertising. But as De Senator De Natale, the chair, uh, said, this is something where Labor accepts the logic. We accept the logic that a sugar tax is likely to reduce consumption uh, and accelerate that reformulation effort. Uh, but I think we need to recognise, as we heard throughout this inquiry, that that is only one option, one option amongst many to address overweight and obesity. And uh, we need to recognise it simply would not be effective without those other measures. Um, I think in those other jurisdictions, like the UK and Mexico, um, the, the, the kind of outcomes, the evidence around a sugar sweetened beverage tax is still emerging, uh, particularly in relation to obesity rates, but it is something that we still need to closely monitor, and we will do that. Similarly, with the changing nature of children's viewing in advertising, children don't just sit down in front of the TV anymore. They, they're using iPads, iPhones, computers, you name it. So we need to look at other ways in which advertising is filtering through, and that's why we've committed to having a review in relation to 
um, the advertising uh, approach. We take this incredibly seriously. Labor really wants to see action to address obesity in our country, particularly childhood obesity. We need to support the next generation so that they can be healthy young adults.